Hi, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap, and I'm very excited to show you the how-to to make the Accordion Hinge album we've included in the October Homestead Collection. Let's get going. Let's take a look at how the album is constructed. Tons and tons of real estate here for your photos. You can see this album isn't finished, but Kay got a great start on it already with some uh, photographs and embellishments. But with the front and back of every page plus the inner flag page, um, there is a lot of decorating potential here. My favorite thing about this book is how it is constructed with an accordion spine on the inside of the book. Well. Let me just stop explaining and start doing it. Let's um, make the project together, but we're not going to be doing the Homestead edition. We'll be working with the Flower Garden edition. So in, um, the Homestead project comes with three variations, and we're going to do one of those variations together. Well, let's begin uh, with some pretty simple steps here. We've got these beautiful bright pink in inner pages, and there will be 10 of them. So. If there's a texture to the page and you want to uh, think about that, I'm, I'm folding the pages with the texture on the inside. You'll continue on folding in half until all of the pages have been folded. With all 10 of these inner pages folded, let's do a little bit more folding at this point with um, one of the longer, narrower pieces. Um, there should be three alike, and this will become our accordion spine. We have to do this three times, and I'll walk you through the process. For the best spine, I think rather than scoring, we should just do the fold everything in half a bunch of times trick. So, working as carefully as I can, I'll line up the two free edges and make a nice crease with my bone folder. Then turn the whole thing around, and you'll have this free edge right here. We'll bring that up to what we would call the mountain fold. So, I'm folding the fold in half. Crisp up that fold, flip the whole works over, and bring the other up to that mountain fold. So now you have an M or a W. Okay, so free edge paper right here. This is the edge of the paper. I'm going to fold this piece in half next. All right, and flip the whole works over and bring the other free edge up to the nearest mountain fold to fold that in half. Okay, now I have a funny looking V. What we need to do is, this is the center fold, let's just reverse this to create a mountain fold. That way I can bring this mountain fold up to the other mountain fold. That's probably the most complicated we're going to get. <laughs> and then we're going to flip it over and then fold this piece in half as well. By always folding up to a mountain, my folds remain uh, much more accurate than if you fold down into a valley, then you got problems. So I have a nice spine. Each, each flap of the spine is at exactly the same height, all because I fold it in half and in half again and in half again. You want to repeat that for the other two pieces that we've included, and we've got this done already for you. And what we're going to do is make a long chain of accordions. So here we have a, a flap with a free edge. You can either use book binding glue, or I'm just going to come in with my ATG any kind of a nice sturdy adhesive. I don't know that I'd recommend like an easy runner for this. You want something a little stronger. So I have adhesive on the inside of this flap and I'm going to bring down the other flap into the valley. Try to get those pieces as lined up as possible and then pinch them together to secure. And again, you certainly can use book binding glue for this if you like. Now I have a double length. I'm going to add one more length. So I can flip this however I want. I'll put adhesive right on this free edge. And then I'll take this other flap and bring those two together the same way I did before. And now I have a triple length of an accordion. All right, and I have all these peaks. This should be about 10 of them, <laughs> I'm thinking. All right, next we have some cutting to do, some trimming. Um, there will be one larger piece um, different than all the others, and that's actually a spine stabilizer. Um, and we need to do just a little bit of trimming with this one. So I'm using my Fiskars guillotine trimmer. The piece begins at 10 inches. And I'm gonna scoot it down to nine inches and trim. I'm gonna do this every inch, so that was nine. I'm trimming horizontally at eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, and then 
two, and one. Then you'll have this whole stack of one by seven inch strips. And if you want to do a little cosmetic work here, I'm going to stack three of these together and round some corners. Now I'm using a corner chomper. That's why I can stack three together. Otherwise, it would be wow, one corner at a time, which I've done that also. You can use the either the half inch or the quarter inch setting, but with three at a time, I just have one more to do. A little bit more prep work, and we're ready to assemble very shortly. Let's go back to our inside pages. I'm using a cork board here and a paper piercing tool. And we need to do some piercing. The key is to figure out where these holes need to go. So they need to be about the height of the spine. So I'm just going to lay my spine right over my page. And I'm going to try to center that with the help of my grid ruler. So it's going to be about an inch from either edge. And uh, get that spine centered there. Okay. So you'll have an inch from this edge to the spine and from this edge to the spine. And with my piercing tool, I'll just pierce boom, on the outside of that. Now, if I were to give you a measurement from this edge to the pierced hole, I'd say it's at 15 sixteenths. So if you just want to measure out 15 sixteenths, hey, more power to you. <laughs> now we need to transfer those pierced holes to the remaining folded pages. So I'm going to unfold them leaving my, my initial pierced page as a template nested right in there. I'll stack them as neatly as I possibly can and then pierce right through all the layers of pages into the cork. Double check to make sure I got those and then nest the remaining pages. Our next goal is to actually cut a line right on the fold from one pierced hole to the other. And for that, I have a cutting mat down on my work surface and then a grid ruler so I can see what I'm doing and my sharp craft knife blade. So I'm just lining the ruler up along the fold line of that inside page and connecting the one pierced hole to the other. And then you'll just get an assembly line down and do all 10 of those pages. And now I have my stack of pages with the slit right in the middle. Now, this is the coolest thing ever. All right, I'll lay my spine so that I have a valley fold with this free edge, and then my first mountain fold next. What you'll do is take one of those page slots and just slide the first folded flap of the accordion into the page. That's it. And then I close that page. And then there's my next folded flap. Take the next inside page and slide it right into the slot. See, and that's why you need your uh, cut in that page to be slightly wider than the, the accordion spine so that you can get the pages on through. And you'll just continue to do that until all of the pages have been attached. Now, once all of those pages are attached, you can certainly do some straightening reinforcing. And then the next step will be to stabilize all of these little flaps inside so that the book can't disassemble itself with handling. And that's where these guys come in. So I, that's why I rounded the corners. It just kind of adds a little bit of a extra special touch and it makes it easier to slide this piece right into the flap of the accordion. And then the height will match your inside pages. So you go on to the next one, insert this little tab into the flap and sometimes you got to work them through a little bit depending on how accurate your folding is. <laughs> if this height of this piece isn't correct, it will make the insertion of this a little bit more difficult. And if you're really having problems, um, maybe perhaps this is your first time making a handmade book, um, just take a trimmer and shave a little bit off the edge so that it will fit because this piece is really essential here to holding this book together. Okay, now you've been given in your kit a total of 11 of these photo mats. Now they're sized exactly to a photo mat, four and a quarter by six and a quarter. 10 will be used for the inside page. So you may want to set aside the 11th one so you don't mess around with it at this point. I'm turning to the smooth side of this inner page and I will put some, oh, there, go, there goes my adhesive. I knew I was running low. And let me show you where this will go. So if you open the book, 
And right now there is no front or back, right, wrong side at this point. Okay, so this is a flexible page here. You want to make sure that this tab is perfectly aligned top to bottom. And once we attach this page, it will secure the tab to keep it from moving around and thus uh, adds, this will add more stability to your album. So if I just lay this flat and I center this page with the adhesive that I added on this edge, now it added more real estate to my album and it secured the tab into the hinge and then my, my album will be very, very strong. I've gone ahead and added adhesive to the remaining pages and I'll go ahead and attach those. With my last page inserted into the book, there's really only two little steps left to go. And that's what I love about this project. Um, we have this flap here, and you can do with it what you want if you want to somehow add, you know, make it more decorative potential. You certainly can. And since I'm out of ATG, I'll just secure this for now with some Easy Runner. And then you want to do it on the back side of the book as well. Okay. Or the front, back, front, doesn't matter yet. What will make this matter is your final embellishment. Now, they had that additional page, the 11th, the 11th one, and Kay has actually gone ahead and graciously uh, added this gorgeous little embellishment, which is simply a D-ring with a glittery brad and some postage edged matting going on here with one of the graffiti prints. And look at how the colors just pop when this is added to the front cover of the book. So I'll just take some adhesive, put this in place. And the beauty of this is that even if you want to hand this off to someone who's not a scrapbooker, they can open it and any pictures that they're getting from the developer, they want to add a 4 by 6 will fit right in here, 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 and so on. This little book will really hold a lot of memories. So I hope you enjoy the Accordion Hinge album and the variations. Let's check those out. Um, we've got this one right here, the seashore variation. So the colors are perfect for any outdoor pictures, photos from the summertime, and the winery version. I also think with uh, the cooler tones of this one, it would be wonderful for black and white photos, perhaps a wedding or another special occasion, senior pictures, which I'm dealing with right now. And uh, Kay again made this gorgeous uh, front panel with the time of your life unmounted rubber stamps. What a beautiful addition to this book cover. And then, presuming you're a Club Scrap member, this will be yours. So get busy and create your accordion hinge album. Enjoy!